I'm the children's pastor here, and we are so thankful for you guys. It is such a beautiful day. And as I was praying this morning over Bethesda, I just really heard this song that the Lord had spoken, and it says, it's always like springtime with you, making all things new. Your light is breaking through the dark. This love is sweeter than wine, bringing joy, bringing life. Your hope is rising like the dawn. We come alive. And I just felt like the Lord was releasing a springtime over Bethesda, over the families of Bethesda, over the women of Bethesda. And I felt specifically that the Lord was breaking off barrenness, spiritual barrenness and physical barrenness. And when you've been contending for something for so long, it can be so discouraging. But the Lord is here this morning to bring fresh hope. And he's saying it's springtime in here. It's springtime. And he's not only saying it's springtime, he said the light is breaking through the dark. So where it's felt dark and hopeless, believe today that the Lord is here for you to deliver you and reveal the light, which is the truth that will set you free. And he's going to break the bondage of the barrenness. And so we just declare over you, over wombs, stand in the gap for people that you know that are contending for children. And we just declare together, Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. You are the hope bringer. You carry hope and resurrection life. And we just speak to the barrenness over people. And we say, come alive. Come alive. Wake up, you sleeping, slumbering one. Come alive. Your king is here to bring breakthrough. Jesus, we thank you for infusing hope this morning, for infusing peace and rest this morning. Jesus, we love you. We worship you and we thank you, God, for the testimonies that are going to come forth. The testimonies. You have a testimony. And I hear that this morning, that you're thinking, I might not have that testimony. And I hear the Lord say, you will have the testimony. You will have the testimony. And so we just break the lies that want to come and speak of like, maybe not me, maybe for somebody else. That's a lie. And Jesus, we thank you that those lies are broken this morning and that we can rest in your word. We rest in your word and who you say you are. So Jesus, welcome. <laughs> welcome in this place this morning. Yeah, welcome, Jesus. We thank you, God, for who you are. We thank you for being the Prince of Peace and the King of Glory this morning. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you. Just look to him this morning. Look to him because he wants to meet you this morning. He wants to revive you and restore you and refresh you this morning. Yeah. Let's just begin to worship the King of Kings. <laughs> Good morning, Bethesda Church. Anybody know Jesus is on the throne this morning? Why don't we lift up a cry to heaven and participate in the song that's been going for a hundred billion years. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. The whole earth without exception. The whole earth indiscriminately. The whole earth in every bad neighborhood and bad job and bad relationship and bad sense of communication and broken family and broken marriage, the whole earth is full of your glory. I need somebody with a voice to lift it to heaven this morning. Come on. Oh, that's it. Louder, louder, louder. You are the Come on, don't let it stop. Don't stifle that song. Let that river flow out of you. Come on. Let that spring, let that brook of praise flow from your heart. Oh, we love you, Jesus. <laughs> We've always got a reason. We've always got a reason to bless your name, Jesus. I raise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemies 
and raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah my weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah yeah. Sing it out Heaven comes to fight for me hey. I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will Sing it out this morning. And I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. Come on, sing it out. I raise a hallelujah. Sing, I will. Oh, I will watch the darkness flee. And I raise a hallelujah. Oh, in the middle of the mystery, yes we do. And I raise a hallelujah. Here you lost your hold on me. And I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Well, sing a little louder. You say, Sing a little louder. Yeah, sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Here we go. Well, sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Yes, sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. Weapon is a melody. Yes, sing a little louder. Heaven One more time. We say sing a little We'll sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. Yeah, sing a little louder. Yeah, sing a little louder. In the middle of the storm. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Lift your voice to the Lord. thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. <laughs> and all who've gone before us and all that will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry holy all creation cried, oh, you are lifted high, yeah. holy, holy forever. And if you walk in freedom, if you bear his name, sing song of angels to the Lamb. Oh, if you've been forgiven, if you've been redeemed, sing the song forever to the Lamb. And we will sing the song forever and amen. And the angels cry. All creation cries, holy, who oh, you are lifted high, holy, holy forever. Hear your people, who oh, hear your people sing, yeah. holy to the King of Kings. Holy, you will always be holy, holy forever. Holy, yeah. holy. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. Yeah. Oh, all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them. Come on, sing it over depression, sing it over sickness. Hey, oh, your name. Is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all doesn't matter what it is all thrones and positions all powers and positions your name stands above them all Jesus your name is the highest your name it's the greatest in your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions in your name stands above them all. And the angels cry, oh, all creation cry. 
would it be enough to say you're holy to say you're holy to say you're holy to say you're holy you're a very present help Jesus you're a very present help Lord you're in the time of trouble you're in the time of trouble holy Come on, I feel you this morning. Don't choke that song. We've got time. <laughs> Can't nobody else sing your song to Jesus but you. Go ahead and let it out. <laughs> I felt you. Don't choke it. This is what we came for, to adore at the feet of Jesus. While you're worshiping, I just saw somebody's gallbladder get healed. I don't know what that is. Healing in the gallbladder. And the second thing is, I didn't see a healing in the lungs. I saw somebody get a new pair of lungs. I said I saw a creative miracle. I saw two, whoa. I said I saw two lungs come down from heaven. While you're worshiping, he's working. Yeah. He's working while we worship. Yeah, yeah. Oh. He's moving while we worship. Yeah. It's pouring while we worship. Go for broke this morning. Go for broke this morning. Go for broke this morning. Worship. Go worship. for broke this morning yeah. oh this is what we came for <laughs> oh this is what we came for Jesus we always have time for you have time for you yeah. and you are what we came for <laughs> yeah you are what we came for yeah. and Jesus we will always make room for you make room for you yeah, this is what we came for. Oh, this is what we came for. Jesus, we always have time for you. Yeah, you are who we're here for. Yeah, you are who we're here for. And Jesus, we will always make room for you. This is what we came for. <laughs> oh. yeah, this is what we came for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sing it to Jesus. Say, hey. oh, this is what we came for. <laughs> oh, this is what we came for. We're here for you. <laughs> We're here for you, <laughs> never too busy. <laughs> never too busy. We came for you. <laughs> 
Oh, this is what we came for. This is what we came for. This is what we came for. We're here for you. You are who we live for. Yes, you are who we live for. And this is what we came for. We're here for you. So It's 
Night and day let incense arise. Day and night, night and day let incense arise. Day and night, night and day let incense arise. Day and night, night and day let incense arise. Day and night, night and day let incense arise. Day and night, night and day let incense arise. Day and night, night and day let incense arise. Day and night, night and day.
Come on, Todd Church, sing it to Jesus. Sing it as if the King of the Oz is the King of the Oz. Is the power of yours. Is the glory forever. Amen. Cry out, Yours. Hey! Is the King of the Oz. Is the power of yours. Is the glory forever. Amen. It's the power of God. It's the glory forever. Oh, man. Jesus, yes. It's the kingdom, yes. It's the power of God. It's the glory forever. Oh, man. And no blessing and honor and glory, power to it. Who sits on the throne? <laughs> Who sits on the throne? And no all blessing and honor and glory, power to him. <laughs> Who sits on the Who sits on the throne? Sing it out. In all blessing and honor and glory, power to him. Yeah. Who sits on the throne? Who sits on the throne? In all blessing and honor and glory, power to him. Who sits on the throne? Who sits on the throne? In all blessing and Honor and glory, power to him. Who sits on the throne? Who sits on the throne? Oh, blessing and honor and glory, power to him. Who sits on the throne? Who sits on the throne? In all blessing and honor and glory. Power to it. Who sits on the throne? Who sits on the throne? Get no blessing and honor and glory. Power to it. Who sits on the throne? Who sits on the throne? time if you've got a voice if you've got strength left in your body shout to the Lord in this place I see walls falling down in the back of the sanctuary indulge me 15 more seconds and if you've got a voice this morning shout to the Lord in here
identify with it's time for you to break up with the things you identify with that he does not identify with oh father thank you oh that you are waking up sons and daughters who know who they are who are not silent you are not silent say I am not silent Be quiet. It is not an hour to hide. You see, the enemy wants. 
wants you to be quiet. He wants you to think it's a time to hide. Oh, no more. No more. We will not get out from under the oil. We will not get out from under the oil. We will not take our eyes off of you. We will make you our dwelling place. We surrender. I said this earlier, I just want to say it again, that we don't graduate from surrender. It is a lifestyle, it is a daily surrender. I do not get to graduate from surrender. Don't keep looking back at who you were thinking of that as great. Look to who you are in him right now because there's greater things ahead. Because if we are looking back, then that only reveals that we forgot who we are right now. We're so stuck in the thing, the way we knew him, that we forget to take time to know him right now. <sighs> he wants to continually be known. He wants to continue to reveal himself. He wants you to know who you are in your every moment when you get to create with him, when you get to walk with him when you get to talk to your children, when you get to talk to your spouse, when you get to talk in the workplace, when you talk to your neighbor, when you're going anywhere. You are his mouthpiece. You are his very hands and feet. You are the representing his very face. Something that recently totally wrecked me. While I was praying, I was saying the words, Father, I thank you that your presence is in me and it's upon me and it's all around me. And then I remembered reading once how the presence actually translates to face. And I was like, oh my goodness. Your face is in me. It's upon me and it's all around me. It, his face is in you. It is upon you. It's all around you. So whatever it is you're fixed on, it shouldn't be hard to find his face.
Thank you, Jesus. you guys love this passionate mama right here? <laughs> Aren't you glad that we have powerful mothers and powerful women in this church? <laughs> you know, I remember my wife and I, 2008, she just got blasted in her bedroom by herself. You know, God, God just even knows your thoughts, you guys what you're thinking. And she had this thought slash prayer, Jesus, if you can heal this pain, that would be great. She was in really bad pain. By herself, I was out of town. The presence of the Holy Spirit landed in her room. She felt heat, electricity, muscle spasms, and was instantly healed. But more than that, it was like all of a sudden she was in the womb of heaven. The wraparound presence of the Holy Spirit was there. And it shifted and changed the whole atmosphere. And I just want to honor women like Olya and like my wife and the other mothers that are in this house. We can go ahead and begin to turn the lights up. But I remember when that happened to my wife, I was like, Lord, make that happen. Will you make that happen to me? You see, we were losing our home, losing our cars. It was the mortgage meltdown. We were in the mortgage industry. And I thought my wife needed to get serious, but there was something else that I was hungry for. And I just feel like in this place that there's people that are hungry for just a deeper manifested encounter with the womb of heaven, with the, I'm, I'm calling it the womb of heaven, but just the Holy Spirit. So can we just all stand up real quick, just real fast as we shift and end? And I just remembered, just lift up your hands right now and just if that's you, or if, you're, if you are hungry for just a deeper manifestation and awareness of his presence, just lift your hands up. Holy Spirit, make it happen like, you, like it happened to me, like it happened to Tisha, like it happens to people in this, in this uh, place. It's just happening all over the world. We thank you for an encounter of your radical love to where it feels like, can you imagine Mary carrying the Christ? So I just declare over all of you that you are birthing something new in the spirit right now. So can we just... Um, Find the people around you. Just give the worship team a hand as well. And just, we're going to transition to the next beautiful part of our service. He's so good. So good. Guys, can we just give a hand to the worship team for leading us in that? That was, hmm. That was some glory. So it's offering time. Jonathan's excited. I want to read uh, Proverbs 3. 
going to hit it in a couple of translations because I just, I like the, the difference. But so Proverbs 3, 9 and 10, it says, honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. Who wants to be bursting with wine? I want to be bursting with wine. Another translation says, honor the Lord with your capital and your sufficiency from righteous labors. No unrighteous labors, all right, y'all? And with the first fruits of all your income, so shall your storage places be filled with plenty and your vats be overflowing with new wine. And one more. Glorify God with all your wealth, honoring him with your first fruits, with every increase that comes to you. Then every dimension of your life will overflow with blessings from an uncontainable source of inner joy. Whew. Glorify the Lord with your first fruits. I've, I've shared so many times up here of my relationship with finances and my, my ongoing journey of, of trusting the Lord with, with finances and, and giving of first fruits. And, and this verse, actually, it reminded me of Cain and Abel. Now, Cain and Abel in Genesis 4, it says, In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel, for his part, brought of the first things of his flock their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain his, and his offering, he had no regard. Now, I used to always read that scripture and be like, that's it. God doesn't like vegetarians. He doesn't want the produce from the land. He wants the fat portions. He wants that meaty goodness. Um, <laughs> but, and I think we're going to leave it right at that. All right, guys, let's pass the buckets. And, um, that, is not, that is not what this is saying. There was, there was a difference in what they gave. And it isn't based off of one giving from the ground and one giving of the animals. It's that Abel brought of the firstlings of his flock. So the newborn lambs that were born, he gave those up. Not knowing, are my sheep going to produce again? I have to trust the Lord. I'm giving up the fruit that I got. I'm giving it up to the Lord, not knowing if I'm going to get more. Whereas Cain took some of his produce, he still has the seeds, he can still regrow, plant everything, and gives it. There was a part of Abel that was like, I'm putting, I'm giving in a position that the Lord has to produce for me again, or I will have nothing. Wow. That's good, Kyle. That's why he had regard for Abel's offering. Because Abel was, I trust you. I trust you, God. I trust that you're going to come through for me, so I'm going to give what you're calling me to give, even if I don't know what the future holds. So let's all stand. Hold out your wallets, get your money out. Now everybody go give money to the mamas. Um, <laughs> this is what we're gonna do, we're gonna take, take your money and so I'm just going to pray. I'm going to pray Proverbs 3 over you guys. So God, would you glorify... Oh, wait, hold on. No. Lord, as we glorify you with our wealth, as we honor you with our first fruits, will you whew, bless every dimension of our life? Will you overflow us with blessings? Would we find an uncontainable source of inner joy in our giving as we partner with your character and your nature? May our barns overflow. May our barrels of wine be bursting forth. May we have plenty. May we have plenty so that we can be a resource for the city, for the nations, for your people. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, let's pass the buckets and give it to Jonathan. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on.
Happy Mother's Day, y'all. First time visitors, if you are a first time visitor, can you raise your hand? Raise your hand. We want to see you. Keep your hand up. We want to get a connect card in your hand to get to know you. Thank you for being here. Um, I want to, real quick, can we give a round of applause to every woman in this house right now? Thank you. Thank you, grandmothers, mothers, future mothers. Thank you. Bethesda is known as a house of motherhood. And every woman in here is a mother because you're in this house today. So thank you. Guys, speaking of kingdom motherhood, we have an event coming up. That was a good segue, huh? I didn't even plan that. That was good. I'm proud of myself. No? Nothing? Cool. Happy Mother's Day, guys. Anyways, we have... <laughs> thank nice. you, Anthony. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Warren's got me. Um, guys, we have an event for women coming up. It is hosted by Bethesda. It's going to be June 9th from 6.30 and Saturday, um, and Saturday as well. The doors open at 8.30 a.m. and it's an all-day event. There's going to be lunch and dinner breaks. We have special guests Bethany Hicks, Stephanie Overstreet, and Deborah Arnott. So it's going to be good. This event is focused on kingdom motherhood, time for refreshing of women. Registration is required. Cost is 57 to 82. Those are good numbers. The other prime numbers. Safe, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so women, please come. It's going to be an amazing, an amazing time. Guys, our Northwest Intercession Conference is coming up. Come on. Get ready for that. July 13th through the 15th, we're going to have Mark Jones, Patrick Kitely, William Hinn. Guys, and um, this is going to be a free event. So we are not charging for registration. This is going to be a free event. So tell your neighbors, tell everyone, this is going to be absolutely amazing. And my last announcement, we have amazing bouquets for Mother's Day that we are selling for the kids' ministry. So you can buy a bouquet. Um, they will be out in the lobby or out in the front entry as you head out. Please grab a bouquet, make a donation. It is amazing. I want to give, can we give a round of applause for Michelle Lotz? Lottenizer, Sonia, and Amanda. They worked amazing to get uh, the photo booth set up as well as the bouquets that we are going to be donating. You pay us and we donate it to you. So, see how I did that? <laughs> Warren, you good? So, guys, can we please rise and give an amazing round of applause for our speaker today, the mother of our house, Tisha. Stand up. Just want to, yeah. <laughs> Just want to honor. My mom showed me that spiritual fertility is more important than natural fertility. We always had broken hearted people in need in our home, and I learned that from her. She, she gave up everything to be in love with Jesus, to serve him, to lay her life down. And I'm just so honored to call you mom. And my mom in love, she, I mean, if you know her, you know how loving she is. I mean, if you've had a Marty hug, <laughs> you, you, you've gotten things broken off of you. You've been healed. Like this woman, she raised the love of my life. And I'm so thankful for you, Mom. And the same thing goes for you. you. You have always had open arms and open door. You have the gift of hospitality. I just love you and honor you. So, can we have every mom in the room stand up? This is important. This is, this is how we activate honor. And yes. Yes. And... If you're a mom, if you're a mom who has been has lost their mother recently, um, or you've lost a child, just put your hand up. We're gonna just love on you. 
If you're around someone with their hand up, moms, you know what to do. <laughs> Dads, you know what to do. Just, we just thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are near to the brokenhearted. Jesus, you get in the mess with us. You are not afraid of our mess. You're not intimidated by it. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you would reveal Jesus to every woman here in that place of sorrow or grief. Thank you, Lord, that even in that place of pain, you repurpose it and you make all things new. You take the ashes and you make them beautiful. We just declare a blessing over every woman here. We thank you for the mothers that are in every different season of their life, whether it's um, trying to have a baby with small babies, mothers who are have grade school children, homeschooling, mothers who have become empty nesters, <laughs> like me, <laughs> mothers with losses. Lord, we just thank you that your, your presence wraps around every single one of us, and you minister to every one of those needs. We thank you for it. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Yeah, give them hugs. <laughs> mm. So good. So good. <laughs> Thank you, Warren. You have brought so much joy to me. I love you. Amen. I have entered into the empty nesting phase of my life, <laughs> which I'm not going to lie, has been a little difficult, and I, I've had those emotions. I've, yesterday I cried on and off all day just realizing that two of my kids would not be home today to celebrate, and one of them was going to work, but he took the day off, bless his heart, my baby, Logan, to be with me. Um, but it's really cool, this testimony, because I realized that Ava was graduating from BSSM, and because we had gone down to Reading a week before her graduation last year, we decided we couldn't make the trip for her graduation from first year of BSSM last year, and so this year I was determined to make it down there, <laughs> and so my mom... I was like, let's get in the car, let's go, let's get an Airbnb. So we drove seven hours last Tuesday, we were there for one day, and drove home seven hours the next day. Um, and, you know, I realized as I was watching this graduation take place, which is at the Civic Center in Reading, it's, it's, um, it's a beautiful facility, and it was just packed with students, faculty, um, course the Holy Spirit <laughs> and as I'm watching Ava yeah I was that stalking mother <laughs> I'm like watching her while she's worshiping just so proud of her just filled with so much love and I'm watching her in this place surrounded by other students that are just on fire and I mean there was just this high point point of worship where these, these dancers rush the stage and the flags are going and, and the students are on the floor and they're just, <sighs> I mean, if you could imagine heaven, that's what this felt like. That's what this looked like. And I realized in that moment, I was like, Lord, thank you that I could sow her into this place, that I could let her go and let her fly and sow her and to see her just flourishing. It was like, I can deal with the empty nesting. I can deal with the goodbyes. Because when you get that heavenly perspective and you see things from that higher place, it's like it, it repurposes your pain. 
And it makes you actually grateful in that grief and that sorrow. And I was just, I was just blown away. I was so encouraged. And, I, and it led me to this message today that um, I have felt like the Lord has just kept me here. He's kept me in this message of spiritual fertility. And when I say spiritual fertility, I mean where no matter what is going on around us, we are consistently producing the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We are consistently producing and reproducing heaven everywhere we go. Say, I am fertile. (laughs) I have heaven inside of me. Everything I touch turns into the Garden of Eden. Everywhere my foot goes, God gives to me. See, there's something that happens when we, we stop seeing ourselves as insignificant and we start realizing that the, our significance will actually produce a significant impact in the world around us. So one of our big vision values here is heal the world. Encounter God, become part of a healthy family, and then heal the world. Because how many of you know when Jesus said, those who believe in me, out of their bellies will flow rivers of living water. He didn't say a pond. He didn't say just a a stagnant lake that attracts mosquitoes and all sorts of pests. He said it was a river. And so spiritual, what God has done in us should always be manifesting all around us all the time. And uh, I wanted to share a quick testimony about that. There, when we uh, built our house out in Washougal, our neighbors, our neighbor, uh, na- the gal, Um, She grew up in an atheist home, and she was very anti-God. In fact, I found out later that her mother kept God from her because her mother had been hurt by the church. How many of you know a relationship with God should never be determined by what people do to us? (laughs) I'm not discounting church pain. I have experienced it, I have walked through that, but I'm telling you the answer is him. He is our healer, and he brings healing to those wounds, right? And so to run from him because of people is the opposite of what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to run to him when we get hurt by people. Um, so anyway, she, we had this uh, garage sale together, and I started realizing that God was not going to let me get away with not sharing the gospel with her. Any of you ever felt that? (laughs) It's an uncomfortable feeling. It's like, oh boy. Because out of my love for him, I'm compelled to obey him. In fact, Jesus said, my disciples, they love me and they obey my commandments. He's not just our friend, he's our Lord. And so after the garage sale, I was feeling this heavy, heavy burden for her and just praying over her and just releasing an encounter over her. And then the Lord said, pick up the phone and call her and tell her I love her. I was like, oh, I wrestled with the Lord. I was like, no, she's going to think I'm crazy. She's never going to talk to me again, Lord. It's going to ruin everything. (laughs) I love it when we argue with God. It never works. And so I picked up the phone. I called her. I said, friend, I need to share something with you. I said, the Lord has touched me. He's changed my life. I can't stay silent about it. I've got to share some things with you if that's okay. And she's like, okay. (laughs) Kind of nervous laugh, you know. I said, the Lord healed me, and he's totally changed my life, and I'm not the same person. And I just want to say to you, he loves you, 
And if you ever need help from him, if you ever feel the desire to reach out and just say, Jesus, reveal yourself to me. Just say, Jesus, help. And it was kind of an awkward pause and, okay, thank you, Tisha. All right, see you later. Goodbye. And I hung up the phone. I was like, well, that was a huge fail. But then three days later, I'm telling you guys, you don't realize how powerful you are. You don't realize that when you just tell someone that God loves them, automatically things are happening in their spirit. I'm telling you, when you smile at someone at the grocery store and you you have a look of hope on your face, you are making a difference and shifting an atmosphere around you. She calls me three days later and she says, Tisha, you're not going to believe this. And I said, try me. And she said, well, the day after you called, actually, I have struggled with um, kidney stones. I've struggled with kidney stones. She was born a twin. And so somehow, some way, she inherited her twin's kidneys. They absorbed into her. So she is highly susceptible for kidney stones. And three days after our phone call, she is passing a kidney stone in excruciating pain. And she's dry, her husband, she's pregnant at the time, which makes it even, even more interesting. And, and she, her husband is driving her to the hospital, and she's crossing the 205 bridge. And before that, though, she, she was crying out to the spirit of her grandmother. She was crying out to her ancient ancestors. Anyone, can you help me? This is what she told me on the phone. And as soon as she got to the 205 bridge, she remembered our conversation. And she cried out. She said, Tisha's God. Tisha's God. If you're real, take away this pain. And she said it was instantaneous. The pain left her body. She got to the hospital, and she passed this kidney stone. I'm not lying. I'm not making this story up. This is what happens when we take risk in the kingdom. (laughs) She passes the kidney stone. It's the size of her pinky finger. I've never passed a kidney stone, but that sounds painful. And it's in the shape of a cornucopia. That's how she described it. So big on one end, skinny on the other end. She passed this kidney stone with no pain. The nurses hadn't given her anything. They're just like in awe. They're like, what in the world? And she says, Tisha, not only that, but I'm feeling this, this, this peace, this, I, I can't even explain it. I'm like, do you mean like the peace that passes all understanding? She's like, yeah, that's a good way to describe it. It was like that. It was just, it was so, I was filled with so much peace. She's like, I want to know your God. You see, there's something that happens when we take our eyes off of our own selves and start to look at the people around us, and we start to realize that we have something they need, that we have the, the, the X factor. We have the holy presence living within, within us that is ready and active and, and moving with us. It says in the scriptures that it, <laughs> I can't even get my words out quick enough, in him we move, live, and have our being in the spirit. And it also says it's not by might, It's not by power, but it's by his spirit. And so today I I wanted to to just read a couple verses and, 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 oh my goodness, Holy Spirit, help me. (laughs) Lord, wrap, wrap me up so they don't hear my voice, but they hear your voice. So 
there was this, this season that I was in where I felt so fruitless. How many of you have been in a season where you feel fruitless? Yeah. Come on. This is real. <laughs> we feel like we've been taking risk. We're, we're doing the best we can, and we feel like there's no fruit. And I, I was having my time with the Lord, and as I was sitting there in his presence, I went into a vision. I went into an encounter. And I want to preface this by saying that I am not one of those people that is all encounter and no word. Okay? I believe they go together. I believe when you have an encounter, there's going to be a scripture to follow up. But I also believe that the church has been stuck in the word and not encountering the presence of Jesus. <clears throat> And so as I went into this encounter, I saw this tree, and it was right by this raging river. And there was, a, there was a bench connected to the tree, and I'm sitting there with Jesus, and I know that the tree is me, that I'm a river planted. I'm a tree planted by the rivers of living water. Come on, help me out, guys. I need, I, need some, I need some more amens. I need some talk. I need... <laughs> and, and, and so there's a, there's a bench, and I know that I am the tree, and I'm sitting there and with Jesus, and there's this raging river. And he stands up, and he picks a piece of fruit off my tree. And he, he takes a bite out of it. And he smiles at me. And there's juice, from the, there's juice from the fruit running down his face. And he says, Tisha, you are so fruitful. And I want to say to you, the ones who are sitting here wondering if your life is fruitful, I want to say you have the fertility of Zion on you. I want to declare over you that you are in the most fruitful, fruitful season of your life. And that has nothing to do with what it looks like around you. That the fruit, because honestly, guys, when I say fruitfulness, I don't mean you're doing more. I mean you are face to face with him. Because a lack of spiritual fertility is always tied to a lack of encounter. It's always tied to a lack of identity. And so as I, as I sat there and I saw this fruit <laughs> feasting on my fr I mean, I'm just wrecked. How can you not be wrecked? Jesus is feasting on my tree. There is a verse for it. It's Song of Songs 5. It's Song of Songs 5, and it says this. I am feasting on the fruit of my bride Come, my friends, and feast on her. You know that we don't just come and feast on him and have communion and, and eat of his body and drink of his, his blood, that he is actually feasting on us. That when we come and worship anyway, <laughs> when we come and lay our whole, like Olia said, we break our heart at his feet. And we say, Lord, it doesn't make sense, but I love you. Yeah. When we come and do that, we are giving him a drink. We are giving him food. I don't know how it works, but we are nourishing him. And not only that, when we are feeding others around us and nourishing them with the fruits of the Spirit, that, that he is being nourished and he is being fed and the world is now being nourished. You remember uh, the story of the woman at the well. This is one of my most favorite stories. It's the longest conversation a person had with Jesus. Longest documented conversation. But that just stands out to me. Because it's a woman who had five husbands. It's a Samaritan. The most looked down in that culture is the one who Jesus decided to have the longest conversation with. 
And when she went into the city, she said, he knows everything about me. When you meet him and you encounter him and you realize he knows everything about you. Let me tell you, honey, you want to tell everybody about him. And my, hus- my beautiful husband, Ben, was telling me yesterday, he says, "Hun, you know that any time there is a story of a well in the Bible, it's usually a husband looking for a wife. Isaac was sent. There are these, these stories where these men, they find their wives at a well. And to think that Jesus is, says, that's going to be my future wife. To a woman who had five husbands, who was looked down on, he asked her for a drink. He said, can you give me a drink? And then when his disciples came back to feed him, he said, I had a meal you don't know of. A sinner, a woman who had nothing to her name, had no accolades, nothing, nothing powerful about her, looked down on. Jesus is saying, I want to marry you. I want to feast on you. I want to drink from you. Somebody in here say, I want to give you that drink, Jesus. I want to give you that food, Lord. (laughs) Her name was Potini. In the Eastern Orthodox Church, they honor her as an apostle. Because I'm going to tell you the rest of the story about Potini. Potini learned that no matter how barren it looked in her life, that meeting with Jesus and feeding and nourishing him and bringing him a drink would make her one of the most fertile (laughs) leaders of the Bible, the most fertile women. I'm talking about spiritually fertile. I'm talking about fruit. And she went and saved a city. They consider her the mother of evangelism. She saved a city. And not only that, uh, she, she was known as one of the apostles. She was actually, God called her into Rome. She went face to face with Nero. Nero threatened her life. She had a team of women with her. And she said, you can do whatever you want to us. It doesn't matter. He tried torture. He tried, I mean, the story is, it's incredible. You can look it up. He tried tempting her with the wealth of the world. They tried beating their hands. There were no scars, no black and blue. Their hands were perfect. (laughs) Nero got frustrated. And so... He put her in, in front of his family. They, they tried to tempt her with all the, the wealth of the world, and she gets all of those family members saved. So now Nero's family is saved, and Nero's like, I'm about ready to just, he can't kill him, he can't hurt him, he can't do anything to him. Until finally, finally, I think he beheaded everybody on, in her group, and he put her in the bottom of a well. But what he didn't realize is she just met Jesus there again. She just met Jesus at the well again. Because God chooses the most barren ground to produce the most fruitful gardens. The story of Hannah. Hannah was the one in the family that she was the most loved by her husband. He had multiple, you know, back then they had multiple wives. One of the wives would have the babies and the other one was barren and they'd mock. Well, look at you because when you didn't have a baby back then, it was a big deal. It's still a big deal. But back then it was all of your success, all of your, your, your strength in life, your, everything was, was wrapped up in how many kids you could produce. 
and it's, the story goes that she comes to the temple and she decides to bring an offering and she's, she's pouring out her heart to the Lord. How many of you know you don't have to pray perfectly? You can just pour it out before him. She's pouring out her heart and she's just laying it all out. And Eli thinks she's drunk because he sees her mouth moving and no sound coming out. And he says, woman, get out of here with your drunken self. And she says, no, 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 I, I'm, I'm just laying it out before the Lord. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just laying it out. I'm just telling him everything that's wrong. Some of you just need to tell him everything that's wrong. You're going to feel a lot better <laughs> after you do it. And, and the story goes that she ended up birthing the prophet Samuel. And Samuel was the one who anointed David. Samuel was the one who brought reformation to the temple. Samuel, he, he laid hands on, the, on the, king of, the king of Israel, David, and that king was in the line of Jesus. And, and, and then you fast forward to this blind man who's crying out, you know, son of David, David was what his name followed Jesus because of the promises over David. God told David, your, your line, your succession, it's going to be forever. And so God took a simple prayer, a wordless prayer, tears, desperation, and created something that we could never have imagined or thought was possible. Put up Isaiah 54, uh, verse 1, if we have it. If anybody's back there, I don't see anybody back there. That's so funny. Isaiah 54, 1, I'm going to read it to you. So great. This whole passage is called the fertility of Zion. Isaiah 54, 1, it says this, sing, it's in capital letters, so I'm yelling it for you, sing, O barren one, you who did not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who did not travail with the child, for the spiritual children, this is the amplified version, the spiritual children of the desolate one will be more than the children of of the married wife. That is a powerful verse. But I want to focus on the word sing because this word is, it's ranan in the Hebrew language. It does not mean to sing. Don't you love the Hebrew language? The translations. It means to overcome. It means to shout for joy. Isaiah is prophesying because of our barrenness when sin and death came in. He is prophesying to that barrenness and he's saying, guess what, guys? You better start singing. Because what you thought was dead, what you thought was infertile, is actually going to produce more fruit than you thought it was absolutely possible. Ephesians 3.20, he wants to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, you could ask or think. So Isaiah is, is giving the future church a method to see fertility break into a situation that feels infertile. And the first word is sing. I'm telling you, when it's time to worship, I don't care how barren it looks, that singing is an overcoming activity that, that, that is, I'm talking about 
when T.D. Jakes, when he walked into his house and he said, how's your lion to me? Because I'm a prosperous man having an unprosperous situation. I'm talking about Jonah, who is in the belly of the whale and said, these are just lying vanities. I might look like I'm in the belly of the whale, but this is is just lying vanities. The truth is that heaven is all around me, that I'm wrapped up in the Trinity, that I'm filled with his presence. When I'm down here worshiping today, I don't see Bethesda. I'm in heaven. I see the great cloud of witnesses. I see Warren's grandmother. I see my grandmother. I see these people that have gone before us when we're singing all the saints and angels. Guys, this is enough to sing. It's enough to sing. It's enough to to have the ability to overcome any barren situation in our life. In fact, it's the answer to the barrenness. We had Steve Backlund here this week with us, and he's saying, you know, people think, oh, I gotta, I'm going to wait till all my problems go away to have joy. Well, that's not how it works. We actually need the joy to get through the problems. Because it says, the joy of the Lord is my strength and stronghold. So I'm saying that we don't wait to sing till we see the fertility, the fruitfulness. We sing to see the fruitfulness. Sing, O barren woman. And the next verse, it says, enlarge the place of your tent. And let the curtains of your habitation be stretched out. Say stretched out. Spare not. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. This is like someone taking their house with four bedrooms and and doing a huge remodel to create 20 bedrooms and not having no children. This is an activity of faith that is in a preparation for what's about to come. I'm telling you what God wants to do through your life, you need to start preparing for it. You need to start enlarging the way you think. You need to start expanding the, 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 and say, Lord, take off any limitations of what I thought you wanted, how you wanted to use me. Lord, use me and don't let me be limited to what I can only think or imagine. Because you want to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Enlarging, expanding. This is a, it's a, um, it's an activity where we start to embrace what God has for us. I, I remember I felt so discouraged when we had all these people moving away to Tennessee and Florida. God bless them. But I'm looking out at the church and it's like feeling empty and I'm like, I went home Monday morning. I was discouraged. The Lord said, Tisha, don't ever count men. Count stars. <laughs> because when you take your focus off the natural and you lift it up to see what he wants to do through you, all of a sudden the limitations of what you thought was success what you thought was fruitfulness, what you thought was an increase, God wants to blow your mind. He said to Abraham, he said to Abraham, count, try counting. (laughs) He wants to dream with you. He wants to open up and expand what you thought was possible. He's saying, take your mind off of this right here and lift it up. And start dreaming with me. You think you're going to write one book? You're going to write 25 books. I'm telling you, there's ministries being birthed today. There's books being written today in the Spirit. There are prophets rising up in this house. There are evangelists rising up in this house. And it's because we're starting to break off the limitations and starting to enlarge our tents and expand and strengthen those tent pegs. Verse 3, for you will break through, burst at the seams, spread abroad to the right hand, to the left, and your offspring, say my offspring, 
will possess the nations and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Say, Lord, you're giving me the nations. Say, thank you, Jesus, that I make desolate places come back to life. Who? Verse 4, fear not. Olia said, we're breaking up. I think we need to break up with fear today. I think we need to be, become more intimate with love. And break up with fear and become intimate with love. And look at this. It says, fear not, for you shall not be ashamed. The Lord is taking shame off of you right now, and he's giving you double honor. Neither be confounded and depressed, for you shall not be put to shame, for you shall forget. That's an interesting phrase. Remember when Paul wrote, he said this one thing, forgetting the past? There's something powerful about allowing yourself to forget. And he says, I forget the past, and I lean. It's like he's stretching. I lean. It's almost like someone that's in a marathon race, and they're leaning to cross that finish line. All of his attention is forward. And he is despising or forgetting the past. Say, I'm forgetting what God didn't do back there because of what he's going to do out here. <laughs> There's something so powerful in forgetting. I think it's like a, I think it's like a tactical weapon. That's, that, that's used. It's like, um, it's like the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. I feel like forgetting is a weapon of our warfare. I'm not saying that we're, that we're forgetting, you know, these things that, you know, maybe we have, we have losses in our lives. Those are beautiful. Like, like God uses all of that. But I'm just saying that the heaviness, the, the limitations that come with the past that's trying to keep us down, He's asking us to lean in to the future and, and let fresh hope, fresh hope come upon us for what he wants to do. I really feel like this, this, these first five chapters are so key for the church right now and, and realizing the spiritual fertility that we're carrying. And it, these are tools to break off spiritual infertility. Because how many of you know spiritual infertility is a bigger problem the natural infertility. The last verse, verse 5. For your maker is your husband. <laughs> the Lord of hosts is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. The God of the whole earth he is called. Our new husband is Jesus. And we are carrying his seed. And it can't be choked out. And the weeds can't grow bigger than that seed. And the rocky soil can't come in because we owe it to him. He is our husband, our maker, the God of our redeemer like Boaz and Ruth. He's come to protect us, to cover us, to nurture that seed. <laughs> mm. Sing. Breakthrough. Forgetting. Intimacy. These are all keys to fruitfulness. Why don't you stand with me? Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you have come and redeemed us. 
that the barrenness of sin and death was conquered by your love. That your forgiveness came in. That your presence, you gave us the gift of your Holy Spirit. And you have now made us greenhouses of your presence. Greenhouses of fruitfulness. And I declare that Bethesda is one of the most fruitful churches. That you have brought fruitfulness to this place. I declare that the city of Vancouver is a fruitful place. I declare that Bethesda is a fruitful place. I declare that what we thought was dead and barren is coming back to life. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that even as you hovered over the waters of the deep and creation happened, <laughs> that you hover over us and you bring new life where it looks barren. I just speak to those barren places represented here today. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing new life and fresh hope, bubbling joy, patience and long-suffering, the beauty of the fruit of your spirit, filling us to overflowing, that we would not only heal the people around us with your presence, but we would heal the world. Lord, take our eyes off of this and let us see the fields of wheat that are ready for harvest. Let us see the nations that are crying out and yearning for more of you. I just release fresh hope and I release a fresh courage Jesus give us eyes to see we want to nourish you we want to give you a drink we thank you Jesus you are the one and only the Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, the Holy One, our Redeemer, our Husband. We love you. In your name, amen. Amen. Give her another hand clap for that wonderful message. Women, you're released to go and pick up your children. Um, I'm going to ask the prayer team to come up, the miracle team to come up. And um, I was feeling if there's anyone in here that is feeling barren in the spirit realm, if you feel like you need to get some extra prayer for that, I'm going to ask you to come up. And if there's anyone that is uh, in the natural have gotten a diagnosis of being barren, I'm going to ask you to come up and get prayer for that. And then if you just need prayer for anything, the prayer line is open to you as well. 